Um, it was New oh, Year's yeah. Eve, and we were preparing to make tacos. We were getting ready to make and tacos. Angelos. Yep. <laughs> and uh, my stomach just started hurting really bad, and I was like, maybe it's this the Braxton Hicks yeah. contraction. So I was like, I can do this. I can still make tacos. And then the next thing I know, I was just like doubled over in my room. My mom just kept asking me, I, do you need to go to the hospital? Are you going to the hospital? And I just kept telling her I was fine. I'm fine. We can make tacos. We're going to make tacos. We're going to do this. I don't know, maybe the third or fourth time she asked me, she was just like, you know what? Put your shoes on. We're going. <laughs> and that was it. And we got in the car and I was driving like a race car driver. And at 4.46 a.m. on January 1st, I had Amari, who was Yay. 10 pounds, no, 10 pounds, Woo, two, pounds. two pounds and 10 ounces. <laughs> With the onesie study, they explained to me that um, they would be looking at babies who were still in the womb and babies who were outside of the womb and their growth and development and if there was much of a change. And for me, um, I had a premature birth and I just really wanted to know what caused it, what um, effects it would have on her and the future. The reason why we're interested in studying um, the cerebellum in preterm infants is twofold. Uh, first, we have shown in previous studies that the, the development of the cerebellum is very, very rapid in the third trimester of pregnancy. And this is precisely when preterm birth happens for the most part. It is so rapid that in fact it far exceeds the, the growth of any other structure in the brain. Uh, in fact, we know this is, these are models of um, the developing brain where the first model is really um, a size of a preterm brain at the time of birth. Um, and then at the other end is, a, is an example or a model of a brain of a baby that is ready to go home. And these models really emphasize um, how the growth is very dramatic and the amount of organization and folding and surface area that is developing over this critical time frame um, is quite exuberant. And so our goal is to be able to identify ways in which we can best support this critical developmental period within the neonatal intensive care unit to ensure the best possible outcome in these high-risk babies. So today, um, Amari is 10 pounds and 3 ounces. She is a little over 4 months. She can do so many things. Um, you know, she has a very firm grip. She can look at you. She can maintain eye contact. She does a lot of talking. She does a lot of talking. Um, she can hold her head up. She almost appears like she wants to start crawling. Um, she, she does a lot. <laughs> If we can be a, a blessing to someone else coming along, I always encourage her to participate in those things. And I was telling Kiara that I wish they had a study like this when I had her younger sister when she was born. She was three pounds and 13 ounces. And at that time, this was 14 years ago. It was all brand new. So I was glad that the opportunity came up for Kiara to participate.